Thank you, everyone. Um, thanks for enjoying this uh, wonderful two films. Uh, now I would like to invite our uh, moderator for this uh, Q&A, uh, Dr. Mohanbir Soni, um, who we are really privileged to have him. He's an associate dean of Northwestern Kellogg School uh, to moderate this. And uh, please uh, uh, give a big round for Tarsim as well as Anshul. Please come over. And, uh, and I did forget to I did forget to say please don't clap in the end. It's not that up a film, but fortunately, no, not many people clap. Thank you. I think it's a bit of an intense experience. Sorry, I can speak actually loud without the mic. But okay, can you want to turn it up or should I just shout it? Uh, I think. We'll All right. right. Just uh, keep it closed. All right. That's it. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you for uh, joining us in this Q and A. Uh, well, that was. Uh, Two very intense films are very, very different. Uh, Can you hold the mic closer? Yeah. I think you should yeah. turn the volume up. It's practically yeah, turn, loud. Turn the volume up. I, I, I can't eat the mic. Um, so, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go on that. Uh, Anshul, let me start with, uh, with a short film. Um, can you talk to about the metaphor of the Monopoly game uh, and how it sort of uh, really tells the story of the movie? Yeah, uh, come, uh, thank you all for watching the film. Um, so I wanted to uh, emphasize not on the, not on the, uh, sort of, I wanted to bring out in subtext. I didn't, I didn't want to say it aloud. I didn't want to make a film which starts and starts talking because I wanted to talk about caretaker exhaustion and uh, at a moment where you are extremely tired of giving and giving and giving, there is no space for subtext. You are shouting. You are shouting aloud, you are shouting amongst yourself, and then there is something like that happening in your family. Uh, like like this, this couple is giving care to someone who is suffering from leukemia. Uh, so they are at your wit's end. So how not to say in that moment aloud, how not to shout in that moment? So uh, for me, where the, the, the main caregiver, the lady, um, is extremely tired and broken and she is, so they must have decided, they must have discussed for a long time that they want to send the girl away. They, it's, they don't feel that she's their responsibility anymore. They want to send her away. Uh, but at that time, uh, at, when they have decided, the husband wants to break that eyes and he wants to pull her into doing an activity which is monopoly which they love. So me and my wife, we, we, we constantly play board games and we as artists, we suffer a lot of our uh, dark nights and dark days, uh, you know, not every day is rosy, not, not few days in a year is rosy. So we go through all that and uh, we have our own way to deal with that. So I sort of brought that, I'm, I'm too young to be saying this, but, but this old couple, I, I uh, imagine them also taking a break from that exhaustion. And Monopoly then became their sort of escape route. Yeah. So uh, in the first half of the short, um, we don't see the girl. Um, and I thought you were going to keep it that way. Um, was it, tell us about the instrument of then suddenly showing her and the last shot finally showing her with her, you know, uh, bald head. So um, why not introduce her in the beginning and why why then bring her in towards the end? Um, both decisions were equally intentional, very, very intentional. Um, there was a risk of making the film about cancer or about the patient, but I think we have a lot of narrative in contemporary cinema where we talk about terminal illness, we talk about the patient who is suffering through the pain. Uh, so I wanted to keep the film about the caretakers, not about her. So while I had to show the pain somehow, but so intentionally, very, very intentionally, I didn't want to show her in the beginning. I wanted to ease that. So you don't see her, then you see her legs, then you see her. It's a short film, but still, I found my stages. Yeah, and I think that was beautiful, because you kept the focus on the caretakers. <laughs> <laughs> 
But, but to answer the second part of your question, why to show her? So, uh, initially I wrote the story where they are going through all this, but they have already taken this decision months back. And the girl is no more. So in my head, the real film is that the girl is, they have, they have decided to stop giving care to this person and save their house. So I wrote that story first, uh, where they decide to save the house, but not the girl. Um, but then I couldn't live with that story. So I wanted them to, you know, decide and then save the girl because that's the, that's the kind of humanity I believe in. And I wanted the film to be about that. It would have been perhaps a more striking film if I would have gone the other way. Yeah. More graphic, more striking. So just after she says, there's nothing that will take this house away from me, she decides to give away the house. Yeah. So I, I still think on the cusp of the, that crossroad where you may decide this or that, I as a filmmaker also have a personal uh, you know, stand to take and this is my stand. I wrote both the stories, but this is what I would like to do. So first I'm talking about a stand. You, you didn't pull any punches in that, in that film. It was difficult to watch towards the end. And, I, I and tried to give a bit of a heads up. Yeah. up ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, it was, uh, <laughs> walking blindly and they just think Romeo and Juliet is outside of life and they end up in a... And just to think for the programmers, short films are amazing things. I think this should not be given as a, as like a little thing before a feature. If you can, it's such an intensely wonderful film. But yeah. you spend so much time building how you need to on a movie as a mood where people should see it, what time they'll urinate and how big their bladders are. <laughs> that when you put the two together, just as a heads up, I know it's a fledgling festival. Don't put those two together. If I had known, I would have never come. It's just, it isn't the right thing to him. Or to me, I just think you leave that, it's a short film thing, you go in a particular state of mind, and then the first one is immaterial. Yeah, and how I, it goes I, I, I got a bit of whiplash. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's a wonderful <laughs> film, and then you see it, and then the other one starts, and I'm just thinking, and I was trying to say, can we show one film, take a pee break, and yeah. start the next one? That's but I think awesome. short films are great. They should just, they should be, they're not a little ad before the movie starts. Can I, can they're I a complete see, thing in themselves. Can I say something? Sure. Uh, I almost, uh, so, so I, I'm not a trained filmmaker, I, I don't come from a film school. Nobody. <laughs> but but uh, I was uh, I was happily a student throughout your film. It felt like a film school and uh, I'm so honored. Thank you. I, I loved your film, I absolutely loved it. Uh, it have been, I mean, if, I, if, if my film had to be clubbed with something, <laughs> just the other side of the coin. Just a frame I, I of mind. That. I just think of the frame of mind. There should be films that are short films. You go with a particular frame of mind. A film that make, takes a long time cooking, thinking I get these things, I have the silence, and I do this thing, and before that something happens, it isn't fair to either group. So, so Darshan, uh, when you look at this movie, um, what were you trying to do? Was this an observation? Was this a message? Was this, uh, you mentioned poetic license. So um, what were you trying to accomplish? What do you want us to walk away with? I think it's pretty clear. I think literally I've never done a film that finishes and the guy tells you the summary of it. <laughs> Just to give you closure because people uh, are little, they need uh, calming down. So I think he, he I, I couldn't have put it any better than he does. Come with a great singer, I explained it to him one go, it's an 18 minute shot. And we did it in one take, the sun comes up in that shot, it's we did about... And he bookends the movie. He does. He bookends the movie. It was basically when I first come across the subject matter, it was quite intense, and I told my brother about 20 years ago, we make a movie now, or we wait for at least two decades when it becomes retro. And then I went off and did a personal film called Fall, and that took me off and did a whole bunch of other films. And I came back, and then somebody in India asked me, I just said, there's a little monkey, I need to get off my back. And this is a film, not expecting to hear a call from them. And they just said, whatever you want to do so that we can do films with you in the future. And I said, sure, this is the film. And I thought they'd maybe talk to one writer, and it was like, it was very strange, because I first thought, probably, was it communicating cool enough? He said, I'm not a very religious person. He said he literally felt that the girl's spirit took over him. He went, COVID hit, he wrote it in one intense scene, and he gave it to me exactly the structure that I asked for. The problem was it was about 40 minutes longer, 
and I just told them the beginning, which was their childhood, and what happened to them after. Because if anybody is not familiar, if you Google it, the guy's strategy started after the story ends. He ended up spending five years in prison for a rape charge. That girl finally admitted that the family in Canada had paid for that thing. The people were not deported for 22 years, and when we were filming, the family got deported. And then I didn't know where the story was going, so I just said, I still am in love. The reason I made the movie is not that we should even have a name for such a phenomenon, and it's a horrible name in English. I think nomenclature needs to be... Honor killing. Yes, it really needs to be re there's nothing honorable about killing a child or this thing. And it, doesn't, it never really existed in Punjabi or in Hindi, but they've embraced it from the West like, uh, yeah, it makes it honorable. And so there's nothing honorable about it. So when we did do it, I was kind of thinking that if we, I needed to end the movie on the one subject matter that attracted me to it, that there was a telephone call that the guys who had come to the the murder alleged that the mother had said this to them, these particular words. And I just said, that can never be justified, but in what, in what universe is that even believable? And then I just said, you know what, I'll put my mom in that situation, because I've known some really wonderful religious people that can do a horrendous evil and harm when they're hiding behind God. And my mother was one of those people that never had a mean bone in her body, but God supersedes all. And I just said, I'm going to make this woman that, you know, and I think the writer disagreed with me. He was thinking, this is a very villainous woman. She says, you did it to him. Like, you know, that guy raped you. One of them raped you. All that stuff. I said, yes. But even if that dialogue is correct, if I know my mom, she'll be hitting herself. She's like the person who loves you so much, they'll hug you and drown with you. So I just said, it's that mother that I want. And I didn't really have a very good actress initially. And I was thinking, all that is going to come out and come with the single is going to book it and it's going to help me. At the last second, the, the two people who were supposed to play that typical Indian style, the guy told me when we tried to get him a visa for Canada that he had been banned from Canada. We had already shot the Indian part. And I said, what happened? You know, the, 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 yeah, the guy who was going to play, play, play the father, then I had to change them. He was banned from Canada, and he just said, like, oh, I have a police case against me, but they still remember? I said, it's a computer. They don't have to remember. So then I had to recast, and then I got two incredible actors. And I gave the scenes back to them. And then I just wanted the bookends because of that. So I told the writer that I think it should end there. If anybody's interested in the research, they can do it later. So when I had the bookends, I didn't know how to summarize it. As everybody knows, you know, Romeo and Juliet or anything, it can be black and white, it can be poor and rich, it can be you know, anything, different religions. The story will work. I don't want to know about their childhood, but I needed somebody to summarize that, kind of like a part from Shakespeare. Yeah. Thing. So when I found that, then I remember seeing Kanur about eight years ago when he first performed in the Mela. And he kind of lost the plot. And he put this thing over his head and kind of zoned out like a Sufi. And I just said, that's my guy. So I kept fighting for him, kept fighting for him. And then I met him. I told him, I will only do one take. I'll be ready for this. And uh, actually, the strange thing is when we did get him to do the whole thing. Uh, it's all one shot. We did about 35 rehearsals in the day. Because I knew that if he's singing and he can hear the girl, he'll never be able to perform. So they're not there. So those are the only theater group. A lot of these people are unprofessional, but that theater group who's performing out there, they've got drivers and all who have gone to theater school together. So I rehearsed them 35 times that they're pretending that the telephone call there, because I know if Kanwar could hear what is happening, he'll never be able to perform. So I did tell him that, listen, this is about the rate, this is about this thing, but they're not going to say this thing. You just be ready when the camera comes to you, you do this, and you walk off into the sunrise. And he said, great. So, and then I forgot that he wasn't aware of how intense the film is. And last year at TIFF, when he won uh, the, that one, he came there for the screening. And I thought, I just have him sing in the street outside. So he was okay with it. And then he was in the cinema, and I thought, oh, he's never seen the movie. So I went up to him and I told him, no, God, this is a lot more intense than everybody thinks it is. So if you're okay, he said, listen, I perform in India. People have their phones out, babies cry, shit, they make a racket, blah, blah. I zone out and I go into my thing. I said, yeah, but regardless, if you decide not to sing, it's too intense. You tell me. He said, I'll sing. I said, okay. When the movie ended, I looked in the corner and I saw him, and he was just sitting like this, and he went, no, I'm not saying it. No. I said, fair enough. I'll take that as a compliment, and he flew him back. <laughs> my, my last question to you, um, as I was uh, watching the movie, I mean, the girl comes across as so strong, so determined, and so hopeful, and at times, I wanted to shake the guy and say, 
and she said to be could come, right? And uh, so does he come across? I mean, is that poetic license? Did he come across? No, the poetic license is the bad line for something else. <laughs> I'll tell you, I think that that was the truth. She was older than him. She was literate. He was a pendu. And with everything that you can think of, there was a big thing left. And they might not have ever survive. If they got together, they might have divorced one another. It's not our decision to make no. if that thing will work. Let them play out was my take on it. So the truth of the matter is, she's doing a law degree in UCLA. And she's a, she's a really smart girl. And the original girl was smarter than him, older than him, and really had the balls in the complete relationship. And he was just playing together, just trying to step up to the plate. And uh, did work out just because other people were holding bigger chips. Oh, well, let's turn to the audience for a couple of questions. Yes. Uh, if you had a telephone during the film, or you came in even one minute late, please don't raise your hand. If you were here all the time we saw the film, you're welcome to ask me anything you like. I cooked the film for you. Before that, uh, can I say something? Shoot. I am a fan of The Fall. Ah, thank you. <laughs> and I saw, it, I saw it in college. Thank uh, you. I was, uh, I think, 2006, 2007? Eight. 2008? Well, it took 28 years to make, but it took four years wow. of shooting. Uh, so, 2006, uh, 2008, uh, me and my friends, the fall, oh my god, it's a love affair. Thank you. Go ahead. First of all, I mean, I just have to say, instantly, you've jumped up to one of my favorite directors of all time, because what a master class. I'll have your child. <laughs> 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 um, uh, just seriously, uh, there's so many, there was one shot where the sun is above the tree in such a, uh, when they're kissing. My God, like, uh, it's absolutely insane. And I can see how much work you've put into this. So can you please walk us through um, the production and Well, the style that I chose for the film, if you know the fall or anything, I'm known as a guy who does a lot of eye candy. And this was the film when I told the writer, I said, this is that imaginative Haneke or Gaspar Noir wrote a script and one of the Iranian women directed it. So those guys deal with really intense subject matter and will give it to you like that. Whereas the Iranians, if there's something nasty happen here, they'll show you somebody in the next room. So I said, that's what I'm going to go with. It. And one accident, which is the hacking of the guy, is the only thing that is a coincidence that I did not want to do, but that I embraced it and left it in the film anyway. And the thing of it was that in each one of these, I told the writer that there is going to be no music. Not only that, there's going to be no background music in the film. It's going to be just played out in medium shots. And if it's not working, we screwed up. So that's why when people came in for the casting and they said, I'll put on an accent, I said, no, this script is not a script. This is a guideline. We're going to sit in some houses, we're going to talk, and we're going to shoot it as much in sequence like I did with the fall for the little girl. We shoot it as much in sequence as possible to see how the relationship plays. Because, she, and, and I could just see that, because they got me some people from Bollywood and they came and took, the woman was like, I think when she was taking him to for the line, I just said, I don't need a read to, I don't need anybody. And she was taking him like this to make him sit down like he's a chotu or something. And I just went like, this is never going to work. He's just there for reading. And anybody that I met out there, and, and India being whatever you say, it's as you know, like skin-oriented as any place. With fair and lovely being your favorite dream. And that kind of stuff, fair, fair and white and lovely. And so for me, I just said, it can't be a girl from there who's playing this part. So at the last second, I lost the one girl that I thought was okay in Canada, and I had 48 hours to put it together. And then the girl, I just started calling to Bangla group. They just said, like, oh, we can't. And everybody I was talking to in Toronto, they were all actors. And I just said, I'm, I don't embrace anybody who hasn't acted before, because the guy hadn't been the problem yet. I even found the guy. And then I got a call from somebody. I just called all my cousins, and I said, do you know Bangla group? Was there ever a girl out there that you were interested in? They said, no, but I'll get that. I said, I have 48 hours. Give me another Bhangra. I can't wait to five, five, the fifth Bhangra group. I said, a girl came here once. She was interested in acting, but she's moved away. And I just said, give me a thing. And he made a mistake of sending me on, on Twitter or Instagram. And I, I don't have Facebook, Twitter. So I just said, like, just send me a picture. He sent me the picture. And I said, get me her number. And I was cycling to my son when she called. And I talked to her. And I just said, just talk to me about where you grew up, what you did. The moment she told me she was the exact brief, I said, I'll move heaven and earth. You're going to be in India and we'll make this work. But I was still just going on a hunch that she's the right person that would play. As far as I was concerned, she had done nothing that time except ran in the background of a music video. Turned out she had done something that I hadn't seen. So when she came out there, I knew we were okay because everybody else that I could see, because he was dark, and everybody else was finding everybody else a lot more attractive. So when I saw this guy, I was really crossing my fingers. And she, I told her, you know, he's not that handsome. You'll have to do a lot of acting. She was okay. When she saw him, she said, like, he's Hot. I said, I love you. <laughs> 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 I know, I just said because everybody else was coming and like, why wouldn't you cast a classic, like, the lightest skinned guy with everything. And I just said, like, well, 
you are you. It's when you go abroad, the thing that I, you know, that we really don't appreciate from the West because they'll take those differences as cultural. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, based in solid racism. And it's been there for quite a few generations, so you'll find all your grandmothers, they do whatever you want, Karan Obiyani Karana. They'll all come up with that shit. So for me, this was a play on that. When I saw her, I just said, okay, I'm going to do this. And I told the actors that we're going to play scene, probably have two takes or three takes. You can talk whatever you want. The thing is a guide. And so each one of those things I decided to shoot was a medium shot. The only close-up I have is a character that never appears again because the actor couldn't deliver. And I just cut to the chai while I'm looking inside because I just wanted to cut some dialogue outside. Otherwise, I did not want any close-up. And the one incident where I didn't want the violence to happen, and it happened is because typical the, the guys in India are just all gung the stunt guys. And I told them that take the scooter into the bushes. They come out with red swords. That's what I want. And they went the first day, and they slipped and fell, and the wardrobe had given them half sleeves. So the, the stunt person couldn't do that, and they fell on the road, and the guys came and hacked that thing. And I just said, like, okay, let's do it again. And we did the next day. I allowed three days. Every day else, I just did one take. That day, it has to be perfect with the light. So I went on the third, on the second day when I did, they did the same thing. The guys fell down there, and I told them, third day, what are you doing different? They said, we do the same thing. And I just said, okay, this is going to hurt somebody. So I said, leave that shot. And I just spent a lot of money then to put blood on their sword and leave that one. And then I was going to go back in India and reshoot it when oh, I lost my actors. And I had to go back and shoot the parent and the mom again. I was going to reshoot that, and I left it in for only one particular reason, because I screened it to some of my director friends. And it really heightened the level of intense because as I said, you know, Shireen Nishad or any of the Iranians, they don't want to show you that stuff. That's the style I was going in. But when we started filming it, I kind of thought it worked as the rule of Buster Keaton's one, which was like, you know, you let the audience out guess you and then you double cross them. Mm -hmm. So every time you think they're about to sex, I leave. Right? But everything, everything was left. So you're thinking, oh, he's not going to show any violence. Mm -hmm. And then there's this intensely violent scene that I don't leave. And then the last act, you're kind of like, oh, please don't go inside that room. I have no intention. And the writer in me had a tip there. They were thinking, he said, like, you need to see it. You need to read it. I said, like, it's 20 million times more disturbing just to hear about this imagined conversation or uh, the way I think it went down. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to play it on that. And he just said, like, it won't be as intense. And I just disagreed. And I just said, I have no intention of going to that room. But I think the audience gets a lot more scared because they've seen the previous room play, scene played out that it can play out. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I left it. Thank you so much for having Thanks. the balls to keep all of us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're going to send the mic to the audience. We have time for maybe one Shout more. Shout it out. Yeah, shout it. Get out the glasses. Yeah. OK. Um, so there were a lot of scenes that were like foreshadowed, and there was like a lot of parallels. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, one in particular was the uh, Romeo character. The first time we see him, he has the handkerchief over his head last time we see him, the only thing that is showing is his face. Um, how did you find the balance when writing? Like, uh, I, I didn't, I made it up and it wasn't written, but I just love the idea that you think he's got blood on his face when he's got that thing, but it's actually her lipstick in the first one because he's kept a handkerchief and it comes back to play. There's a couple of other scenes when he's sitting in the scooter where he's got the handkerchief with him. And because there were no close-ups, I can't show you that he's like, that's his actually his little charm that he keeps of hers. So it actually plays in a lot of other scenes, but they're only medium shots. If you watch it again and again, I don't recommend that. You'll see it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody One. else? One more. I just want to say both of these films were so beautiful. Thank you for telling these stories. Um, question for the second film. You filmed this in two countries, and also you're very specific about timing and time of day, lighting, etc. So a little bit of a logistical question. I'm wondering around how long this took you to shoot. Um, and then second question is, there's so much specificity about Punjabi culture and what's going on. Um, what was the word? The Specificity. There's what does that mean? Like a lot of uh, detail. Okay, A lot of detail after you know the father's oh, death. Mean? What's happening in the house? So I'm wondering if these are accounts from the actual family or a member in the family, or is this just based on your understanding of the culture? Uh, I'd say number two, because I wanted to approach neither of the two families. It's quite clear to choose a side in this particular one. But I, I just, when we did it, I had gone to Canada at that time and I did some farm work before I went down to LA. So I kind of knew 
uh, 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 what that group is like. When the girl earns and has finally an income of her own, she's going to you know, grow a new pet and do what she wants. And this is always a second generation problem. It's not particularly Punjabi problem. That's the thing on this one. It's not a Punjabi problem. It's a cultural problem. It's just something that happens among the Muslims. It happens among everybody else. So to use a word like, as I was saying, my little beef, to use uh, uh, what is this, honor killing is a horrendous. So for me, it was just a cultural problem. If you didn't have it there, you they could be from any religious background. And uh, the only intensity that's more in this one specific to Punjabi is that it was a joint family. Yeah. They had like 27 bedrooms upstairs. And if anybody's ever been in a joint family, they would be able to Punjabis relate a lot more on where this intensity is coming from. Because if something happens, you cut your losses and go. In this particular one, you're thinking, why would a mother say that? The main reason would be, she's got about 11 other girls living in that household. So if one drinks water from the wrong well and it goes wrong, you can say either the other eight will not marry or will marry below their stage. And that is not acceptable. So the mom just has to make the decision. I cut my losses and get rid of this one or do I this thing. So there's a line only that one, one of the mothers is screaming when they're going intense, which is like, you know, because of her, none of you are going to get married. Yeah. And when she says, you know, that is, so that's actually the most important thing. The kind of stuff that I sat down with the people in the house, I was filming. Nothing got to do with the real family. I asked them, and they all were on my side. I said, then you say this. And that was the main thing, that the decision is made. Uh, and, and, and in the real case, it was quite strange because her dad was kind of the alpha in that whole family. And that those things kind of become cult-like. So you've got the alpha male who kind of became handicapped and then died. And then her brother took over, the wife, the mother's brother. And those guys would always overcompensate. And he ended up just becoming this more religious than religious. And he had just been appointed in the Gurdwara. And everybody backlashed against him. So the whole community, actually, 98% was against him. All I was saying, you don't, don't agree with him, just understand. So for me, that stuff is very Punjabi, living in a joint you know, in a home and doing uh, uh, berry picking and all that. And then you just appoint one person. Then you have to think not like you have one daughter or two daughters. You have to think that everybody in that is painted by the same brush. So if anybody has lived among those, you'll know that that can be Why are those lights are incredibly tough? To <laughs> Thank you. Well, I think Thanks. that's about the time we have. One more. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm not sorry. Um, so uh, this is two part. Yeah, hi. Uh, Abhinav Raina, he is my co-producer, uh, oh. and he was, uh, he was the first one to believe uh, in me and my script. Uh, we met last year, and then uh, in January when I set out to make the film, I didn't have anything, so I sort of, uh, after many no's, he was the first yes, and he is uh, he's, he's from Chicago. So, yeah. Thank you. What are you going to do next? Sorry. What are you going to do next? Let me say something. So, uh, first of all, uh, thank you, and it was great, great film. Both of them, of course, first is mine. Uh, so, when Anshul came and, and talked to me over the phone, said, uh, I want to make a film, I said yes, because I believe in this guy, and I know, and now you all know that, you have seen his. This guy is incredibly talented guy, and no, I, and that's why I said yes. Um, so, yeah, thank you, um, and uh, that's all I wanted to say. Well, I want to thank uh, all the three folks here, and, and I think it was a really uh, a treat. I know you don't want to call it a treat. We were clapping for the, thank we were you. clapping for the movie making, not thank for the movie. Thank you. Thank you. So, and so finally, I'm sorry about the heat, but now you know, uh, yeah, sorry about the heat today, but now you know what a winter's day is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank, thank you so, so much. much. Thank you all. Thank you.